This is Mac OS Ken. Apple may have hit pause on the back to work thing. OS updates for some of your Apple stuff. And a really troubling spyware story. It is Tuesday, the 20th of July, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. Get a free one-month trial at headspace.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Notion, one workspace for your whole team. It's not just space, though. Notion is all-in-one team collaboration software that combines note-taking, document sharing, wikis, project management, and much, much more into one simple, easy-to-use tool. Here's what else is cool. They are working to improve this all the time. I got an email yesterday about some neat features, like synced blocks. If you've got the same copy in a bunch of different places, changing it once changes it everywhere. Super convenient. New APIs, public Notion pages that put your branding front and center. Notion's not just a great tool. It's a great and growing set of tools helping hundreds of thousands of teams worldwide save time and get more done. Now is a great time to try it for your team. Notion is currently running a special offer to listeners of the show. Go to notion.so and use promo code macOSCAN to get $250 off its annual team plan. That's multiple months free for your growing team. Don't forget, that's Notion.so and our promo code MacOS can during checkout. Get collaborating with $250 off at Notion.so and use promo code MacOS can. The back and forth between Apple and corporate employees continues. It's been going on for a while, actually, though I haven't been doing those stories here much, waiting instead to see how it was going to shake out. Then word hit last night that Apple is postponing the back-to-work, at-work thing, so let's revisit where employees were and what the word is now. iDownload blog catches us up on the management versus employee exchanges. Basically, Apple said in June it wanted office types to head back to their desks for three days a week, starting in September. Employees pushed back a bit. Apple stood its ground. Employees complained that while Apple had said it would look at work-from-home requests on a case-by-case basis, those cases were harder to get approved than they had been before COVID-19, according to the workers. Still, Apple stood its ground leading to another letter from employees on Monday. Let us focus on one paragraph in particular. In the Dear Tim letter, employees said, With COVID-19 numbers rising again around the world, vaccines proving less effective against the Delta variant, and the long-term effects of infection not well understood, it is too early to force those with concerns to come back to the office. Furthermore, allowing some greater flexibility than the current 3-2 schedule, would enable us to truly validate whether some people working remotely, not just everyone occasionally working from home, is compatible with Apple's culture of collaboration. Skipping ahead about 12 hours. Bloomberg hit with a report Monday night under the headline, Apple delays office return by at least a month as COVID spikes. While the Bloomberg article does acknowledge the pushback from employees... The piece has secret sources saying the new delay is Apple responding to a resurgence of COVID variants across many countries. On now to happier things. As had been expected, Apple hit with a slew of updates on Monday, though not as big a slew as it might have been. Most of our update news comes from Mac Rumors today, starting with news of iOS 14.7 and not iPadOS 14.7. A couple of sites, including Mac Rumors, made the mistake of assuming both updates would hit at once. 
MacRumors ended up correcting itself, saying an earlier version of this article said that Apple had released both iOS and iPadOS 14.7. It does not appear that Apple has released an iPadOS 14.7 update for iPads, which is unusual as these updates have never previously been separated. First time for everything, I suppose. The iOS update did hit top of the new features. That thing that let us know that the iOS update would be out by Monday at the latest. Support for the MagSafe battery pack for the iPhone 12 line. Apple started taking orders for that device last week, with the first to arrive to consumers by Monday, the 19th of July. The same day, Apple released a new beta for iOS 14.7 with support for the MagSafe battery pack, which is how we knew the update would be out to everyone by yesterday at the latest. That said, the power pack is not the only hot newness supported. Other tweaks listed. Apple Card Family adds the option to combine credit limits and share one co-owned account with an existing Apple Card user. Home App adds the ability to manage timers on HomePod. Air quality information is now available in weather and maps for Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, South Korea, and Spain. And the podcast library allows you to choose to see all shows or only followed shows. Bug fixes to go around and, as of this writing, an unspecified number of security issues addressed. The update is free and it is available over the air as if by magic. From the computer in your pocket to the one on your wrist. Another piece from Mac Rumors says Apple has released WatchOS 7.6. According to Apple's release notes, according to Mac Rumors, the update brings support for the ECG app and irregular heart rhythm notifications to 30 additional regions. Regions like that one over there and some other places. It also brings security fixes, number unknown as of this writing. The update is free. It is available through the Watch app on an associated iPhone in a way that seems much less magical than the OTA iOS update. Let's go now to the TV room, where we find waiting tvOS 14.7. We know nothing about this one, except that it exists. As a piece on this update from Mac Rumors explains... Apple's tvOS updates are usually minor in scale, focusing on under-the-hood bug fixes, performance updates, and small tweaks rather than major outward-facing changes. No new features were discovered during the tvOS 14.7 beta testing process. There is a place for tvOS 14.7 on Apple's security page, though it remains blank as of now. Available for Apple TV HD and Apple TV 4K. The update is free. If you've got your streamer set to update automatically, it'll do that. Otherwise, you can prompt the update in settings in tvOS. I mentioned in the iOS update that 14.7 brings the ability to manage timers on HomePod. That's apparently part and parcel with the HomePod 14.7 software, also released on Monday. That is the only named feature, according to Mac Rumors. Otherwise, it's just general performance and stability improvements. Stabs and perfs. HomePod should update automatically unless that feature has been disabled. The Mac Rumors piece says updates can be prodded in the Home app as well. Now, it's unclear whether this was part of the software updates or something that happened behind the scenes, but Mac Rumors says Apple seems to have flipped the switch on spatial audio and lossless audio in India. As of this writing, the Apple Music site in India has not been updated with the new functionality, but a number of Apple Music subscribers on the subcontinent have hit Twitter saying the features have gone live. Something sort of odd for the Mac on Monday. While Apple did not release a Big Sur update, it did push out a second release candidate for the next update, macOS 11.5. Little to nothing known about that. So far, says a piece from Apple Insider, the betas have largely indicated the update is a maintenance and compatibility release with no new features or major changes occurring this time. 
So you may wonder then what's up with the Safari 14.1.2 update for macOS Catalina and macOS Mojave. A piece from Mac Rumors says that hit on Monday with no explanation. The site assumes it has to do with security fixes for machines that can't find their way to Big Sur or just haven't found it yet. As with Apple's other Monday updates, there is a space for it in Apple's security page. But just like the rest, it promises details soon, though they're not available as of this writing. More news in a moment, but first a word from Headspace. Meditation made simple. You know how meditation apps are supposed to help you relax? Headspace is the first one I've found that's done that for me. Other apps left me feeling dumb. It's like they assumed you already knew something about meditation. Headspace meets you where you are. If you're deep into meditation already, the easy-to-use app still has a lot to offer. Or if you're like I was, clueless when it came to meditation, Headspace is perfect for you. Anyway, it has been for me. Everything from beginner courses to short SOS meditations for particularly stressful moments to longer meditations to help you deal with particular issues and your feelings around them. The Headspace approaches to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. It's helped me relax. It's helped me to focus. See what Headspace can do for you. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash macOSCan. That's headspace.com slash macOSCan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash macOSCan today. Even without knowing what they are specifically, the security fixes in Monday's updates will be the most important security news for most people. Not the biggest security news, though. The biggest security news is of Pegasus spyware. Over the weekend, The Guardian ran a piece saying human rights activists, journalists, and lawyers across the world have been targeted by authoritarian governments using hacking software sold by the Israeli surveillance company NSO Group. That was according to an investigation by 17 media organizations, including The Guardian. They say the findings suggest continuing abuse of NSO's hacking spyware, Pegasus, which the company insists is only intended for use against criminals and terrorists. Not that they have control over how it's used. According to The Guardian, NSO says it does not operate the systems it sells to vetted government customers and does not have access to the data of its customers' targets. Well, someone does, including the 17 media organizations. That is what they've been investigating. A massive data leak that The Guardian says contains a list of more than 50,000 phone numbers that, it is believed, have been identified as those of people of interest by clients of NSO since 2016. What do we know about those? Well, they're seriously a who's who of folks whose secrets should probably stay secret. They're said by the report to include more than 180 journalists, including reporters, editors, and executives at the Financial Times, CNN, The New York Times, France 24, The Economist, Associated Press, and Reuters. Hundreds of business executives, religious figures, academics, NGO employees, union officials, and government officials, including cabinet ministers, presidents, and prime ministers, and the numbers of close family members of one country's ruler, suggesting the ruler may have instructed their intelligence agencies to explore the possibility of monitoring their own relatives. When deployed, the report says the Pegasus malware can be used to extract messages, photos, and emails, record calls, and secretly activate microphones. The closest thing to good news in this report just because the number shows up on the list does not mean the device was infected. 
the bad news? It doesn't mean it wasn't. Why are we talking about this here? Well, it appears that iPhones are very susceptible. Apple Insider highlights some of the findings from Amnesty International's security lab. For many of the attacks, the piece says it appears that NSO used vulnerabilities within Apple software to gain access. Two headings that drew my attention immediately were zero click, zero days in iMessage and the possibility that Apple Music was employed, though the Apple Music use involved more than just running the app. I'm hoping to have more about the technical specifics for this week's episode of The Checklist by Secure Mac. Now, you may be wondering where Apple is on all this. The Cupertino company gave The Guardian a statement saying Apple unequivocally condemns cyber attacks against journalists, human rights activists, and others seeking to make the world a better place. For over a decade, Apple has led the industry in security innovation and, as a result, Security researchers agree iPhone is the safest, most secure consumer mobile device on the market. In other words, most people on the planet don't have to worry about their phone being targeted. Apple's statement to The Guardian went on to say, Attacks like the ones described are highly sophisticated, cost millions of dollars to develop, often have a short shelf life, and are used to target specific individuals, while that means they are not a threat to the overwhelming majority of our users, we continue to work tirelessly to defend all of our customers, and we are constantly adding new protections for their devices and data. Yeah, that's cool, except this pond has ripples. Spying on journalists could get those journalists killed, stopping any report that they're working on and scaring off other reporters who might investigate. And then we have no idea what's happening with repressive regimes or energy companies or friends of friends of people in power. While no one may be stealing your pictures, this story could be hugely important to people who live, you know, on Earth. Sometimes I think we should give hard lines, calculators, and encyclopedias another shot. An interesting assertion from one market tracker iPhone has closed the gap with Android in the States, according to the latest data from Consumer Intelligence Research Partners, or CIRP. In a press release, the firm said it estimates for customers that acquired a new phone in the year ending with the June quarter, Google Android and Apple iOS each had 50% of new activations. CIRP partner and co-founder Josh Lowitz was quoted in the release, pointing out that for several years, Android smartphones had a significant edge, with over 60% of customers opting for an Android phone in most quarters. In the past couple of years, though, iOS has closed the gap and now splits the market with Android. The firm's other partner and co-founder, Mike Levin, was also quoted in the release, saying in the most recent quarter, Apple had an edge in loyalty with 93% of prior iPhone owners upgrading to a new iPhone, compared to 88% of Android owners staying with Android. Over several years, iOS gained about 5 percentage points in loyalty, while Android remained flat. This allowed Apple to steadily increase the iOS share of new smartphone activations. Holy cow, word of another Daytime Emmy Award for Apple TV+. Plus. Yesterday I told you that Apple had picked up three trophies on the second day of the Daytime Emmy Awards. That was one for the Mindfulness for Kids show Stillwater, and two for the short film Here We Are, Notes for Living on Planet Earth. Now a piece from Mac Daily News says Apple has picked up a fourth on the third day of those awards. The fourth award is for outstanding multiple camera editing for the puppet and song-filled kids show, Helpsters. No more of those coming, by the way. Sundays was the third and final day of this year's Daytime Emmys. And finally today, you know not to use hydrogen peroxide to clean or disinfect your Apple gear, right? I mean, you know that, right? Yeah, Cult of Mac says Apple is stressing that as the COVID-19 pandemic stretches on. 
Because yes, we want our stuff COVID-free, but bleach and hydrogen peroxide, which is also a bleaching agent, those are no-nos. Apple site poses the question many may be asking, is it okay to use a disinfectant on my Apple product? Thankfully, it answers said question, saying using a 70% isopropyl alcohol wipe, 75% ethyl alcohol wipe, or Clorox disinfecting wipes, you may gently wipe the hard, non-porous surfaces of your Apple product, such as the display, keyboard, or other exterior surfaces. Do not use products containing bleach or hydrogen peroxide. Avoid getting moisture in any opening. And don't submerge your Apple product in any cleaning agents. Don't use on fabric or leather surfaces. And of course, never, ever feed your Apple product after midnight. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by Notion. One workspace for your whole team. Get collaborating with $250 off at Notion.so and use promo code MACOSCAN. This show is also sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. Get a free one-month trial at Headspace.com slash MACOSCAN. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.